Welcome to At Issue, I'm H. Wayne Wilson. Thank you for joining us. This time the conversation will revolve around entrepreneurship. It's a word we toss around sometimes casually, but there's a lot involved in going from the idea phase to final production. We're going to be talking about that with uh, leaders of organizations that help entrepreneurs, and we also have an entrepreneur in the studio to discuss how her company is taking a long time to get up and going. Chris Setti is here. Chris has been on the show many times, uh, usually in the role of the executive director of the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council, but you're also the interim executive director at Distillery Labs. Yep. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And we'll talk about Distillery Labs in just a moment. Also with us is Mike Stubbs. Mike is with Peoria Next Innovation Center, where he is the director. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Caroline LaHood is here. Caroline is director of operations for, is it 3D Color Forge or is it just Color Forge? Just Color Forge. Just Color Forge, mm -hmm. but 3D is involved in We're this. We're using 3D printing. We'll, and we'll talk about that in mm -hmm. a moment. And also with us, Kip McCoy. Kip is with OSF uh, Healthcare, where he is the v vice president of Innovation Studio. You're going to learn about all these organizations in the next half hour and how we can help entrepreneurs in central Illinois. And I think maybe for the audience's benefit, maybe the 30-second version of your organizations. We'll start with you, Chris. Uh, sure, well, I'll talk about Distillery Labs then, because uh, uh, Distillery Labs is, uh, will be a center of innovation and business incubation in downtown Peoria. We're, uh, we've been working at this for a while, and we're really excited to be about 40,000 square foot facility. Uh, that has everything from co-working space to maker space, uh, to some 3D printing uh, uh, tools that'll be there, but really uh, a center of activity around the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, so lots of great programming and uh, really hoping to uh, not only um, help uh, people uh, figure out their ideas, but to really launch businesses. And, and it's relatively new. It's just getting its feet on the ground. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been working at it. For, we've been working at it for almost as long as Caroline feels like <laughs> she's been working on on Color Forge. So it's because uh, um, because some things take uh, take time. And so, uh, but uh, but the the good news is that uh, we'll be starting construction here in August. We'll be starting some demolition of the building, uh, interior demolition of the building. It's at 201 South West Adams, um, and we'll be open within eight or nine months after that. So, uh, but but we've been doing programming ever since the G Beta um, Business Accelerator program. And, and we'll other talk things. about G yeah. Beta. So we're going to uh, we're going to use terms that <laughs> I haven't heard. Right. <laughs> um, let's let's turn to Peoria Next Innovation Center. It's um, that's under the Bradley uh, umbrella. Yeah. So Peoria Next is operated uh, and financed by Bradley University. So it's a business incubator. It was built 15 years ago, and so we have research laboratories that startups and entrepreneurs can use to then help them scale and grow. Uh, the idea is we provide below market rates for those startups uh, to have space to really figure out their idea and get that idea going. And then once they get to the scale, then graduating out into the community. So Chris, this is not a competition yeah. between the two. No. Think of it as, uh, I, and I think Mike earlier when we were uh, talking before we've talked about it like a spectrum, right? So uh, we're distillery labs. Well, first of all, and, and what Peoria Next offers is a really unique opportunity, especially around wet labs uh, and research labs, where uh, distillery labs are probably uh, a little more agnostic when it comes to uh, what sorts of businesses. And, and we purposely aren't building wet labs within distillery labs that if we get companies that eventually need that, they'll, they'll move into Peoria Next. Uh, Peoria Next has uh, uh, some spaces that aren't uh, wet labs as well that are really we think of as graduation spaces of people who will come through distillery labs because distillery labs isn't going to be designed to house companies they're more to house individuals or very small companies and then uh, the idea is to graduate them into Peoria Next where they'll refine their business and then eventually graduate out of there. So how does Innovation Studio at OSF Healthcare fit into all of this? Yeah well what we're doing about two and a half years old uh, for, for being part of OSF, we are looking at and launching new companies that are licensing technology that uh, OSF has developed, either individually or jointly with some of our university partners, uh, with the University of Illinois System, Bradley, and most recently ISU. So um, what we're looking to do is uh, start, start companies, uh, license technologies that can be utilized uh, by local entrepreneurs uh, who are interested in, in using those. And then they could be housed. They would use programming that Distillery Labs has, uh, utilize not only the space at, at both, but some of the 
uh, other support services that are offered for uh, new businesses. I want to talk about some of the challenges that face uh, organizations that are starting up. But first, I thought we'd use uh, Color Forge as an example, and then if the three of you could input into how you might help a company like Color Forge, because you're almost nine years into your idea. Yeah, I would say nine years into our technology. The company's newer, and all of these men here have been huge helps already. Um, Color Forge is the beauty industry's technology partner for reimagining cosmetics. So we're able to unlock volume production and sustainable production of bespoke products. And we do that through 3D printing. We have a patented form of 3D printing called binder jet manufacturing. And we're able to produce um, an agile supply chain, bespoke products, green packaging to really transform how the beauty industry is currently manufactured. So the 3D printer makes the cosmetic and the biodegradable container? Yeah, so that's what makes us really unique, our patented process. So traditionally, cosmetics are printed and are compacted into a metal, like hard to recycle metal pan. So our process is instead prints a biodegradable structure around each cosmetic, and it's made out of earth minerals, so it's completely biodegradable. Just toss it when you're done. So it's a very sustainable process. So it was 2014 that, um, and I always use the term, you were doodling on a napkin. Yes, yes. So my husband, John, John LaHood is a founder and he patented the technology. And I love our origin story, as I've said before. Um, he found, he had the idea. He actually saw binder jetting in a sugar process. So they were printing sugar into sculptures. And so he thought, why can't we do that with makeup? He has seven sisters, so he's always around makeup. Um, so he looked on eBay and he found a 25 year old 3D printer because 3D printing has been around for a long time. Just the patents began to expire around 2014, making that technology more accessible. So we drove down to Tennessee and we bought this random printer on a farm, hauled it back. And we spent many years just in our basement developing and patenting the, the technology. So yes, we've been going for nine years, but the company has really been ramping up for the last couple. Has she turned to you and said, um, and, and John, and, and, and said, We're, we've got this great idea, we think. <laughs> yeah, so in addition to the director of the Purinex Innovation Center, I'm also the director of technology commercialization at the Turner Center at Bradley, uh, which houses the Illinois Small Business Development Center. So I do no-cost business consulting for people who have questions on how do I protect my idea from an intellectual property perspective? What's the patenting process? How do I know if it's a novel idea? What are ways in which I can get help from one way or the other? So in addition to providing the space at Peoria Next and what we have, um, so hopefully when they're at that stage of doing more R&D and have more machines here. They can provide space of, of her or her company or others like it. But in addition to that, even without being a tenant at Peoria Next, we provide no-cost services for people that have those questions. So I have an idea. How do I make a company off of that idea? How do I protect that idea? How do I monetize that idea? And so happy to sit down with people in the Peoria area, which is what I do uh, the other half of my time other than uh, being uh, the director at Peoria Next. Chris, um, the word monetize came up. Capital is critical. Um, we, can, we can look to natural fiber welding. Mm -hmm. Luke Haverhall's a fantastic chemist and came up with this great idea. How old is NFW? You know, I think they're probably seven or eight years now and, uh, since, since, I mean, and it probably, that's maybe when it emerged. I'm sure it was an idea maybe even long before that, but. Uh, and, and, the, and the problem is, is that they really, I mean, may I use the term profitable yet? They're, they're making some money. They're, they're, they have revenue. I don't know that they have profit yet uh, because they're still, they're still a startup, right? And they're still they're, they're, uh, building their capital and their so, workforce. So is, with that as an example, how does, how does a Color Forge or any company, um, Endotronics, you name it, uh, come up with capital? Um, and I, we'll, we'll talk about capital through OSF in a moment, but mm -hmm. where do they turn to? Because you haven't, you haven't sold a product yet. Sure, yeah. So a lot of people start with their own uh, investment, right? Um, and then looking at friends, friends and family, right? To figure out who are people that are just really starting at that very early stage where it's just completely relationship-based and huge amount of risk. From, uh, if we look at natural fire welding, you can go through accelerators that help you look at how do I apply for federal grant funding? And so there's things called SBIR grants that allow you to get $250,000 from the federal government or other grants like that to then 
startup to, okay, I can do more research, can refine my product, get it ready to go. Then what they're looking at is venture capital funding, right? So uh, we're helpful in Peoria in the fact that we have the Central Illinois Angels, which is an angel investment network. So angel in the way that they invest really early on in early companies that are high risk. So not that it's not an investment, but it's like the, if you need to find somebody that you're at this depth where you need more capital because you aren't making revenue, you aren't making those sales, that's where they come in and invest and help you kind of stay afloat. And, and maybe Kip can help us with that Central Illinois Angels. Yeah, I, uh, a couple jobs ago, <laughs> was in an economic development position and, and helped put together uh, what's now Central Illinois Angels. Uh, the group has just over 40 members presently, has invested uh, around uh, $20 million in about 30 different companies since it started in about 2009, 2010. Uh, so yeah, they, they are looking at some of the earlier stages of, of companies. Um, not quite the idea stage, if you've doodling on the napkin, uh, uh, quite that early, um, but when you get a little bit of traction and a little bit of um, uh, positivity from customers or customer feedback, that's where that group may uh, come in. And it's not uh, millions and millions of dollars. Usually angel groups are investing uh, hundreds of thousands, of tens of thousands of dollars into companies early on to uh, kind of get them to the point where they would be able to access venture capital, which would then be millions of dollars that would be coming in depending on the needs of that company. Chris, um, let's stay on the issue of, of uh, capital. Peoria doesn't have a fund per se, and I no, and it's I, not like a San Jose or a Boise, Idaho. Right. Well, and I don't even know if San Jose has a fund. What San Jose has is a bunch of people who understand what what risk is and what reward is uh, when it comes to the startup community. So uh, we often it's called the flywheel, right? And how does the flywheel get spinning? And once the flywheel gets spinning, it just keeps spinning. And in in the San Jose, they've had so many startups. Uh, um, and a lot of failed, but a lot of succeeded. Uh, and so there's a lot of people who have exited their own startups and then are, because they recognized how much money maybe they made in their own startup, they're willing to plow it back in, right? So I think that's where one of the areas that our region needs to, uh, to improve upon is access to capital. And we have a great organization like the Angels, but there's a, there's a stage between the friends and family stage and the Angel stage uh, there's a gap, and it's often called seed funding, right? And this is where you're really investing in really just ideas, but you you're not you're not Caroline's mother or her or her father-in-law or best friend. You are somebody who just has some money that they want to invest. Usually smaller pockets, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, and so uh, some communities have developed their own seed funds. Um, sometimes it's a community foundation. Sometimes it's just a wealthy person that recognizes that. Uh, and so that's one of the areas that I think uh, our collective efforts around entrepreneurialism uh, and innovative, you know, really, but we're talking about scalable startups here, right? Companies that might take eight or nine years to get to revenue and maybe more years of that to profitability. Uh, and I, I think by exposing our community to more opportunity, uh, more innovation, uh, by having showcases and, and being able to uh, celebrate a company like Color Forge or uh, something uh, a little further down the road like natural fiber welding gets the people who have the ability to invest at this level uh, to think, oh, you know, there are things happening here that are worth investing. Uh, there are not a lot of national seed funds. They tend to be local because they are people who both recognize the opportunity um, to make money, right? You don't go into a, uh, having, you know, investing in a seed round to lose it, but you also recognize that uh, you place lots of small bets and hope a couple of them pay off. But it, they tend to be more local because you might have the additional uh, motivation as an investor uh, to want to help a local company. But Mike, the state of Illinois has a f has a, a, a matching program for? The state of Illinois has a billion dollars from the treasurer's office. It's a fund of funds, right? So it funds other venture capital firms that then fund companies. And so we don't have a, a specific independent venture capital firm in Peoria, right? And so that's one thing that, uh, that becomes a little more difficult. But as uh, Caroline has experienced, the networks that we have to get people and entrepreneurs here to talk to other funds in different areas is strong. And so we are able to get funding for those entrepreneurs. It would just be easier at a seed fund perspective. Uh, as Chris was saying, 
if from a hyper local perspective in that very early stage we had our own independent fund and so to the extent we do that there are organizations that then uh, will assist or match those funds that are raised it's just the process of getting that type of uh, company if you will created in the area and getting the support from the community of what that looks like and how to actually get it going and, and I think it's, it's difficult for the public sector to do this in right. in many ways right because it's 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 taxpayer dollars and you're you're betting taxpayer dollars often on 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 startups and so it, it there it may be unpalatable politically uh, or amongst the citizenry uh, there are communities that have done this and and start and 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 the um, the the state uh, the state treasurers that's an investment strategy they're not just investing money and in just because they're good guys they want to they want to make money um, but the city of Peoria just recently announced uh, a grant opportunity. It's not a seed fund, but it almost operates in some ways as a seed fund, up to $25,000 for technology-based startups who want to locate in Peoria. Uh, you know, in, in, and you get more, you can get higher priority in, in certain parts of downtown or, or up, uh, you know, if you go into Peoria Next Innovation Center. And that's $25,000 to help you pay for rent and some other startup costs. It's, it's what's called non-dilutive, meaning you're not giving away a portion of your company, uh, you know, a, a portion of equity. So it's the start of, and for the city of Peoria, it's important because they're looking to attract companies to the region. And they recognize there's an economic benefit beyond the grant uh, of having companies, you know, uh, locate here uh, in, in, the, in the Peoria. And, and uh, I don't mean to interrupt, no, no, but I want, I want to make sure that we, yeah. mm -hmm. OSF Healthcare has a, a in, fund, in, a fund yeah. but it's, it's, it, it's restricted in some ways. Yes. Uh, so we have OSF Ventures, which is uh, on a third fund, a total of $250 million that we're managing uh, assets under management, but it's off of the balance sheet of OSF. So it doesn't have limited partners. It doesn't have outside investors that are part of that and it's investing, we're investing in what's called series A or later. So it's companies that are more well established and have had uh, a decent amount of de-risking happened early on. And it's also a very strategic fund where it's really about the benefit to OSF healthcare and the strategies that we're employing to help our patients and our caregivers um, as opposed to a, a place-based fund where you're looking more about that investment in local companies. Not that we wouldn't invest in local companies, but... Uh, Let me turn to Mike, and, uh, because everyone wants to know, well, entrepreneurship, you haven't made a thing yet at Color Forge. No. Nine years and you haven't made a thing. And that, that's not bad, that's, mm -hmm. that's typical. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Mike, uh, how do you measure success? Because, uh, I mean, the little I know about Color Forge, it seems like this might be something that will go. Natural fiber welding, that's something that's going to go. Mm -hmm. How successful are we? Because we know there's failures. Yeah, uh, so that we've had a tremendous amount of success in Peoria from a startup perspective, and so we should be proud of what the ecosystem has been able to produce. Because Peoria Next is 15 years old, you're able to actually see those long games start to play out, right? So we talked about natural fiber welding. You had mentioned Endotronics. Mm. Endotronics is a company that does an implantable heart device for people susceptible to heart failure. Uh, they've done over 600 heart implants in actual patients, including some in Peoria from OSF that were um, implanted, and so they are uh, going uh, very very well on a clinical trial. We've had companies like IntelliHot that created uh, commercial tankless water heaters. They did the water heaters for the 49ers NFL stadium. And now they've got contracts with Hilton and Hyatt and Marriott to do water heaters in hotels across the world. Um, we have companies like Veloxity Labs that's now located here that originally started with two people. I think they're at 20 now and are growing rapidly at Peoria Next. And so what are ways in which we can keep those types of biotech companies that are doing bioanalysis at a scale here? We're, we're and so one way to look at it is, is jobs, right? Uh, those companies in Peoria, at Peoria Next, have created over 1,200 jobs. Uh, they've raised over $439 million in equity and grant funding, including $39 million from federal grants and non-dilutive funding. So we've shown that you can actually bring money into Peoria from these companies that are growing from here. I, I want to follow so, up on that, yeah. in, in that same uh, line of thinking with KIPP, because those are good numbers. Yeah. Uh, but the importance here is wealth generation I mean, that's, that's where we're really focused on. Yeah, that, that's really what 
as Chris was mentioning earlier, he, I think he used the term flywheel. It's, it's really when you invest in these companies and the companies become successful and ultimately they have an exit, so they either go public or sell to another larger corporation, um, there is a multiple on the dollars that were invested and then that goes back to those original investors, those angel investors, the founders of the company, and then you'll see those dollars reinvested in additional startups because you've created this newfound wealth and, and people get more comfortable with that investment and being able to invest in those companies. So you start to see, as Chris mentioned, in San Jose and uh, you know the Silicon Valley and the places that we, Boston that we know, they've had that success going for a number of years and it's really that wealth generation that, that helps continue and, and, and keep those things going for the local startups. If I might just add one thing, if successes are great, failures are okay too, and I think we yeah. have to, as Midwesterners, I think we have to understand, you know, so um, it, the idea is to fail forward, uh, fail fast and fail forward, right? So uh, entrepreneurialism and inno being an innovator is about constantly failing until you get it right. Um, and but it takes a, a bit of risk tolerance on the part of, of investors to understand that. And I think that it's uh, we have to be okay with the that not everything. And that's the where what, seed funds are important is that they understand that you're placing lots of small bets, uh, but but that but that many of them will emerge from that and and be ready for follow-on funding. I'm sure ColorForge is not planning on failing. <laughs> At least that's not the plan. No, it's not but, the plan. But but, but I want to know what challenges you faced in trying to get to that production aspect? Yeah, so many. Um, it's a very deep tech. We have to do a lot of development. At times we had to wait for the technology to almost catch up to our idea. Uh, especially with additive manufacturing, the landscape is changing rapidly. Um, we had to go build our platform at University of Liverpool with a six print channel because we tried to work with a number of additive manufacturing companies on existing platforms and it couldn't handle our process. So lots of little failures. We always say, you know, you get a win and you'll get a loss. Um, you'll have people who don't believe in you. We don't come from traditional backgrounds in additive manufacturing or cosmetics. So there's a lot of naysayers, but I think you have to be a little bit crazy to be an entrepreneur, and we've got a lot of that. <laughs> Caroline has just admitted that she's crazy. Right? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> but uh, the intent, and, and you mentioned going to Liverpool because that's what where the technology was, yeah. et cetera. You plan on being in central Illinois when it comes to production Yes, time. of course. We're both, my husband and I are both born and raised Peoria. We know the value. Um, we want to raise our family here and build up our business here. Peoria has always been a manufacturing, you know, town, and now you have a new wave of it. Um, Industrial Revolution 4.0 is part of additive manufacturing. Uh, let me turn to Mike, and maybe Chris can add to this, but uh, how do you keep entrepreneurial companies in central Illinois? It, you know, somewhere in Galesburg, Bloomington, Peoria, Morton? Yeah, so I think we have good examples of that with uh, autonomous stuff, right? They were purchased by Hexagon. They're still located here. Precision planting is in the area, right? Uh, Natural fire welding is still here. Um, Virtue Sense graduated out and was here. It's really coordinating as a as a group, and the GPDC does a great job with that. Of how do we actually get people to feel like a family? You're supported here from a funding perspective, but we can help you find locations. We can help you find workforce, and those are really the things of what are ways in which we can reduce the risk that those startups see while they're scaling and see that ahead of time so you can have those questions and conversations before they have to continue to reach out where they feel like maybe they're not getting the same support that they, they should so, going so is this, through it. Chris, is this a question of uh, if a, a startup company sees successes in Peoria with, you know, they stayed in Peoria, you know, we, we saw that happen, we might as well do this. I, I think... I think that's I think that's a good point. I think the fact that natural fiber welding, which for a while may have thought, well, we're not going to be able to scale this company here, uh, the fact that they are able to scale the company here, I think, is a signal to other companies. Both, and I will say, we we talk about entrepreneurship and innovation a lot when it comes to kind of growing our own, the the La hoods of the world. I think that we could be the type of place that actually imports. Uh, innovators and entrepreneurs as well. And I think the work that, that OSF and Bradley and GPDC have done over the is to build an ecosystem. And I know that that word all, almost has become a cliche, right? But it's to surround 
um, our entrepreneurs uh, with support. Right. Uh, I think there's a, still a gap when it comes to the, the, the financial capital, but I, but there's no gap when it comes to support. And I think mm -hmm. Carol, Caroline would hopefully echo, echo that when when our innovators say they've got an issue, there are people who are ready to jump in. Both Mike and I, Andrew Nui, uh, the, the folks at, at, at G Beta who work under the distillery labs that are uh, are plugged in not only here locally with with a, a network of people, but uh, uh, internationally uh, to, to make those connections. And with that, we'd like to talk about a lot of other things, including how you take some, some ideas from USDA lab, et cetera, and create something mm -hmm. for jobs here in Peoria. But we'll save that for the next conversation <laughs> on that issue. Let me say thank you to Chris Setti, who is interim executive director at Distillery Labs, and to Caroline LaHood, who is director of operations at Color Forge, and to Mike Stubbs, and uh, to uh, Kip McCoy. Kip is at OSF, and uh, Mike is at Peoria Next. Thank you all for the conversation. We'll be back next time with a discussion. We're going to talk about OSF healthcare again next time, but this time it's about the need for healthcare at home. OSF healthcare has a method to provide quality healthcare, hospital level healthcare at your home on the next Ed Issue.